Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready, because the Lord is coming one day. Thank you for tuning in to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is Daniel White IV, the eldest son of Daniel White III. The intro music that you just heard is my late grandfather, Daniel White Jr., singing a song titled Get Ready. Today, my father, Daniel White III, is going to share with you news and information relating to biblical prophecy so that you can be prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Daniel White III is the national best-selling author of over 20 books, including Just Jesus and The Prayer Motivator. He has spoken in meetings across the United States and in 23 foreign countries, and is the president of Gospelite Society and Torch Ministries International. Now, here's your host, Daniel White III. Welcome to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is Daniel White III, here to remind you that Jesus Christ is coming back soon and that you need to be prepared. This broadcast is not about predictions. However, it is all about preparation. This broadcast is not about setting dates, as some foolishly have. However, it is all about preparation. First today, Let's look at some signs of his coming in the news. The disciples asked Jesus in Matthew 24, 3, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus Christ then went on to give them and us clear signs that show us when we can begin to expect to see the coming of the Lord, and the end of the world. Looking at world events through the lens of the Word of God, let's look at some headlines from today's news that point to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. First up today, the U.S. will ensure Israel's military superiority. According to the AFP, Defense Secretary Leon Panetta said the United States of America will ensure Israel retains military superiority over its adversaries as the country faces the potential threat of a nuclear-armed Iran. Speaking at APAC, Panetta stated, This is an ironclad pledge which says that the United States will provide whatever support is necessary so that Israel can maintain military superiority over any state or coalition of states as well as non-state actors. He touted President Barack Obama's record of security assistance to Israel, saying the administration has dramatically increased military aid since Obama, President Obama, entered the White House in 2009. Secondly today, Israel welcomes nuclear talks with Iran, but says they must be prepared to strike if talks fail. According to the Jerusalem Post, the head of the National Security Council, Yaakov Amidror, said that Israel must be ready to act against Iran should talks between the international community and Tehran fail. 
Still, Amidraw said that Israel praises the renewal of talks between the international community and Iran over its controversial nuclear program, which the Islamic Republic claims is for peaceful purposes. However, it was reported uh, on U.S. A Today News on Wednesday that the Iranians were caught through satellite viewing trying to erase evidence of creating nuclear weapons. The national security head added that without placing the military option on the table. The Iranians will not take such talks seriously. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 21, When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Thirdly, today, Canadians and Germans report strange sounds coming from the sky. According to CTV News, mysterious sounds have been heard booming from the sky all around the world. In some cases, they were so loud they set off car alarms. The unsettling noises were heard recently from Europe to Canada, sounding like groans and powerful horns. The internet has been buzzing with theories about what the sounds could be, with suggestions such as Jesus returning and the world ending put forward. However, university uh, in Canada uh, physics professor Professor Jean Pierre uh, Saint Maurice told CTV News that the sounds are electromagnetic noises emitted from auroras and radiation belts. The Bible says in Luke twenty one twenty five, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, and upon the earth, the distress of nations. Ladies and gentlemen, you can read these stories in depth and get more Second Coming related news on our website at secondcomingherald.com. Now, it is time for Prophecy Boot Camp. Prophecy Boot Camp is where we deal with the basics, the fundamentals, if you will, of prophecy doctrine, the end uh, times, uh, scriptures, and what is going to take place in the future according to the Bible. We are not trying to be profound here. We are dealing with the simple, basic uh, thoughts and ideas and doctrines of the second coming of Christ. Pardon me. In fact, this broadcast is not for the scholars. This is for folks who want to know what's going on. Our aim here is not to make predictions or to set dates but to help you get prepared by understanding how things will unfold in the end times. Today we are at part seven of our series titled The Church and the Tribulation from John MacArthur's book The Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our subject for today is titled The Betrothal of the Church. MacArthur writes the following on this subject. The meaning of Ephesians 5.22 through 32 is another reason why 
the church in its distinction cannot be Israel. And if we aren't Israel, then we don't have to stick around for the time when God works with Israel. Amen. The church is presented as a chaste bride. Let's look at Ephesians 5 and verses 22 and 23. Paul says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Now go to verse 25 through 27. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2, Paul says, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. The plan for the church is that when the church is presented to Christ at the rapture, it will be absolutely chaste, pure, and undefiled. Going back to Ephesians 5, Paul says in verse 32, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. You say, what's the mystery? Is the figure of marriage the mystery? No, that wouldn't be the mystery because the marriage figure was in the Old Testament. That is not a mystery. However, the Old Testament, rather, however, in the Old Testament, the figure wasn't of a chaste virgin, it was of an adulterous wife. Israel was pictured as an adulterous wife. In the Old Testament, Israel is pictured as the wife of Jehovah. The whole book of Hosea is devoted to a historical allegory of the relationship between God and Israel. Now, Israel is seen as God's wife. But what kind of wife is she? She is adulterous and untrue, a harlot. And the harlot is promised that she will be restored in the kingdom. So Israel is a wife, but a harlot. The church is a bride and a virgin. There's a difference. They cannot be the same. Things that are different cannot be the same. The mystery, the new thing, is the church as a chaste virgin presented to Christ, sanctified, without spot or blemish, clean and pure, that can't be Israel. That, rather, can't be Israel. Israel was an adulterous wife, fooling around with other gods, committing spiritual adultery, and they don't get restored until the trouble of the tribulation. So don't confuse the chaste virgin presented to Christ with Israel, an adulterous harlot and unfaithful to God. Wow, that's powerful stuff. I hope that gives you a better understanding about how there is a difference between the church and Israel and that the church will not be going through the rapture. So you need to get ready to get up out of here. In closing, let's consider what God wants you and I to do in light of his second coming. Ladies and gentlemen, God wants us to engage successfully in spiritual warfare in the last days. He wants us to occupy until he comes. In light of that, our topic for today is titled, How to Fight the Lust of the Flesh. According to endtimespreparation.com, spiritual warfare against the lusts of the flesh takes place in the mind and heart. 
This battle takes place in the mind and heart because it is not the things themselves that defile a man. It is the heart that defiles a man. A man's heart is corrupt, therefore he corrupts himself. Jesus Christ said in Matthew fifteen eighteen and 20, or Matthew fifteen eighteen through 20, those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. Man is not made unclean by things. He is unclean because of his polluted heart. He is polluted and corrupted in a man. The real spiritual warfare takes place in the heart and mind. Satan and his demons are simply not able to violate the free will of a true believer. While the devil will provide a strong temptation, it is ultimately the man who makes the choice in his mind to do evil. The flesh, the enticements of the world, and their impact on our thinking and desires make up a major part of our spiritual warfare. The battle against the lust of the flesh must be won, ladies and gentlemen, in the mind. Let us pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for what our hearts have heard, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt. And Lord, thank you for speaking to our souls. Thank you for the presence and the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, help us to truly get prepared for your second coming. Help us, Lord, to pray, to seek your face, to humble ourselves and to turn from our wicked ways. As your children, create within us a pure heart and a pure mind, a pure soul and spirit. Help us not to continue in the old patterns of life of doing things. Lord, help us to turn away from all ungodliness save our souls and change our lives in jesus christ the holy name we do pray and for his sake amen now dear friend if you're listening today and god has spoken to your heart and has spoken to your heart about getting saved from hell and getting prepared to go back with the Lord Jesus Christ. Please understand that the Bible tells you very simply how to be saved from hell and how that you can go back with the Lord when he comes back. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Romans 10, 9 and 13 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And now, friend of mine, if you're willing to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior today, if you're willing to receive him into your heart to save your soul, I guarantee you that he will save you. Please pray with me the following prayer. Don't doubt, don't fear, just believe. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friend, please understand that the power of life is in the unseen, not in what you can see. Please pray with me now. Heavenly Father, I realize that I am a sinner and that I have done bad things in my life. I have broken your laws. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me. 
was buried and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life today and forever. Please remember the words. Before I say that, let me say congratulations. If you have uh, prayed that prayer with me and you have believed in your heart that Jesus Christ died for you and was buried and rose again, I want to be the first to say congratulations on trusting Christ as your Savior. He will never let you down. Uh, he will always be there for you. And you will never, never regret serving the Lord Jesus Christ. As I have said before, if I find out one day that there was no hell, I will not trade one day serving my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and serving God through Him and by the power of the Holy Spirit. It has been one wonderful ride. Now, remember the words of the Lord Jesus in Matthew twenty-four forty-two: Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doeth come. In Matthew twenty-four forty-four: Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Keep looking up, dear friend, for your redemption draweth an eye. Those are the words of Jesus Christ. Keep looking up. For your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator. Even so come, Lord Jesus. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in to the Prophet Daniel's Report. Remember, you can stay up to date with prophecy news and events on our website at secondcomingherald.com. If you would like to know more about accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior, what to do after salvation, or looking for a good church home, please visit GospelLightSociety.com for more information. This radio broadcast can be heard daily on Live 365, BCNNRadio7.com, GospelLightWorldRadio.com, Buzzsprout, iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, and can be downloaded from numerous outlets online. God bless, and until next time, keep looking up for your redemption draw if not. Now here's a song that will encourage you as you await Christ's return. You got to get your business straight.